Well, good morning and welcome to part two of our series. You've made the decision to get a heat pump. You've got your survey booked, but there are things you need to know before that happens. In part one, we talked all about the location of your heat pump. Today, we're gonna to focus on the pipe work. How do we get the pipes from here to the hot water tank? Now, for those of you with combi boilers, this is gonna be really important because you're gonna to need to find a location to install a water tank, something that you don't have today. With that, let's head inside and let's go and take a look at the tank. Now your heat pump is gonna need somewhere to store hot water. That is gonna be in a cylinder like this. Now, if you're a combi boiler owner, you don't have one of these today, or you don't have any way to store large amounts of hot water. So you're gonna to need to find a space in your house or possibly in a garage where a cylinder that size or even larger can go. Now, we had an old cylinder in here, I'll pop a picture up on the screen now, that took up about half this space. And it actually had a couple of shelves above it. You can see the wooden battens behind. Those are what the shelves rested on. And this is where we stored all of our spare blankets, spare bedding, and it kept it nice and warm because the old tank wasn't particularly well insulated. These new tanks are incredibly well insulated. There is no heat escaping in here. But as you can see, there is also no space really to store bedding. For those of you with a condensing boiler, hopefully the new tank will fit into the space where your old one went, therefore you won't have to make any more space within your house. For combi boiler owners, you are gonna to have to find some space in your house. Now as a last resort, you can put the tank in the attic, but that will require a structural survey to make sure that the weight of the tank can be taken in your attic, um, which may add a little bit to your cost. For oil boiler owners, you're probably going to have a tank something like this in your house to store hot water in. Again, it'll probably be a one-for-one -one replacement. Now, one of the things you should talk about with your installer is the size of tank that they're going to fit. We were restricted because of the narrow size of this cupboard, meant we had to have a taller tank to be able to get the volume of water that we needed. But as part of the calculations they will do, they will want to understand how many baths and showers each person in the house might have in a 24 hour period so that they can size the tank appropriately. This particular tank here is 162 liters. It is more than enough hot water for multiple members of the family to have a shower in the morning and in the evening if they want. We don't actually have baths in this house. We've replaced our bath with a walk-in shower. So we don't actually use that much water. Now let's talk about the route for the pipe work because the pipes from this have to get to the heat pump outside. And as you can see, they go up into the ceiling. We'll go up into the attic now and we'll take a look at where they go. Okay, we're up in the attic. As you can see, there is quite a lot of pipe work up here. But basically the cupboard where the cylinder is, is approximately here. The pipes come up through the ceiling into this space. Now this large wooden platform that you can see at the back here, this is where the old water tank used to sit. And as part of the move away from the old boiler to the heat pump, we no longer needed that water tank or the header tank for the heating that used to live up here. So that's all gone. And the pipe work that you can see there that goes up through that shutoff valve across to the corner over there, that is the pipe that goes outside. As you, as you can see, all the pipes are well insulated. That makes sure that the heat stays in the water, not heating my attic. Now the tank you can see on the back wall there is called a volumizer. This gives the system more volume, so more hot water in the system. It makes the heating more efficient, but it also helps with the defrost cycle. So when we need to get rid of all that ice that is built up on the condenser, we can take water from there and flush it back through the system to get rid of that ice. Now you will end up with more space in your attic, especially if you have a water tank or a header tank up here, but don't assume you're gonna get all that space back because this pipe work needs somewhere to live. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head outside and I'm gonna show you where these pipes come out and how they get back to the heat pump. So as you can see, we have a nice straight run down the wall all the way down into the back of the heat pump. This is worth spending some time on with your surveyor because I've seen installations where these pipes zigzag all over the wall or even wrap around the building and it looks really ugly. 
with some clever planning and positioning of the heat pump itself, they can make the pipe run dead straight up the side of the house and into the attic. Now, depending on the construction of your house, you may be able to take the pipes inside the house at an earlier opportunity. But we don't have that ability. We had to go up and into the void, into the attic, across the attic, and then down into the cylinder. But this depends on where your cylinder is located. The ideal installation is to have the shortest possible run of these pipes that you can. Because although they're very well insulated, they will leak some heat. As you can see in this shot from my thermal camera, these do radiate a bit more heat than the background. Now the loss is minimal because these are really well lagged, but the shorter the run you can get, the better efficiency you're gonna get out of your system. Now one last thing to consider. This tank is pressurized. We have a pressure gauge, gauge down here and it's currently at about one and a half bar. That means your hot water is gonna be coming out under pressure. That means if you do suffer from low hot water pressure today, you're gonna to get a nice surprise. Your hot water pressure is gonna improve dramatically with a pressurized cylinder. Just to illustrate that fact, this is my cold water pressure. This is my hot water pressure. As you can see, plenty of hot water coming out really fast. And this is because the tank is under pressure. That's it for part two. In part three, we're gonna talk about all things insulation. The insulation that you need to do to be able to get your EPC certificate, which you will need for the boiler upgrade scheme to get the grant. If you're waiting for part three, it should hopefully be on the screen over here. If not, hit that bell notification and you'll get updated as soon as the video is released. With that, I'm gonna sign off. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care, bye-bye.